All right, welcome to episode 10 of the Redline Rebuild Sunbeam Tiger Project. I had a little vacation in the middle of things. It's been a little hot, but I have made some good progress. So let's talk a little bit about where the car sits today as we kind of come down the home stretch to get this thing running again. So you'll notice in the edge compartment that I've actually put a few more things together. These were basic nut and bolt items. In the last episode, we got the generator all hooked up, got it wired, no problem. Uh, I've got the brake stuff all set. Um, I've got the header tank now for the cooling system installed, all those hoses and all that stuff sort of set, tubed in. What's left to do for that is the, um, the actual heater hoses, but I've got them all. I need to get a new neck um, for uh, the intake manifold. Still, that's on the order. It may come today, and that'd be great. Um, a couple of big changes, though, what we're going to do. So, new distributor. So this is going in. The one that I removed from this car was the stock 60s points distributor. What we have here is an MSD ready to install, uh, pointless, fantastic. Uh, it's a pro billet. I actually bought this several years ago and hadn't used it yet. So it's gonna have a chance to get used now. Um, and it is ready to go. What's cool, it looks pretty modern with this, but the reality is the, um, it's still just your basic wires. You've got power, you've got coil. Um, there's really nothing terribly fancy about how to set it up. And I've painstakingly got the engine ready for this to drop into. I'm still very nervous about it because I have installed, you know, a handful of distributors in my experience, uh, a couple of Porsches, some other small block Fords. And yes, you can very easily get it backwards and uh, blow a lot of fire out of the carburetor if you haven't done it right. So. I think I've got it ready to go. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding when that goes in. Um, here's a super cool thing too though, is my buddy Joe Parlanti powder coated the, um, the air cleaner assembly for me. And boy, does this look nice. Um, originally this would have had a, a gray hammer tone spray finish to it, but the powder coating looks almost identical and it lasts forever. And it's still, you can pick up the fine details in the AC air cleaner assembly that is Tiger specific, like, and if you don't have one of these air cleaners, they're very rare, they're very hard to find. There are a few people that make them now, but uh, as reproductions, but it's always nice to have original stuff, and those are the original ones for me. The last piece of this, what I've realized as I'm moving forward with this is, I still have the stock fuel pump, stock lines are connected. When I get this distributor in, and assuming the water lines and all that stuff are set, if I wanna fire it on the carburetor, this 650 CFM that um, also we got from Holly to run it on the test stand up in Michigan, I can do that super, super easy. So executive decision made that we are gonna fire it with that carburetor first, make sure the timing is set, make sure it runs, make sure there's no issues. Part of me still worries a little bit that those uh, roller rockers um, are gonna whack the inside of the stock valve covers. They shouldn't, but it might. I don't know, we're gonna see. Seems to rotate over, but you know, when stuff starts spinning fast, I don't know, I just wanna be aware of it. And then we will do the, the uh, Sniper EFI, because that's gonna entail a whole different set of circumstances of plumbing a return line to it, and uh, some other wiring, lots of other stuff. Still pretty easy, but um, it'll be kind of neat to do a back-to-back -back of carburetor versus EFI on this particular car. Um, but here we go. All right, let's do an inspection on this thing. And uh, I need to make sure that the rotor inside it is pointed at number one. And I'm gonna make a little mark on this thing so I know where that is. Just cause it doesn't have points in it doesn't mean that you have to skip that other step. So already it's got a couple of screws. So when you look under here, you know, it's got a rotor button and, and here's where your spark's gonna fire. So what you wanna do is line this up. So I know that on a the small block Ford, just like on the other motor, you know, this vacuum dash pod is in the same sort of place. So these two um, are kind of my reference points because they're the closest to this pot here. So I know that if this is 
done in, it was the fourth one up was number one. So uh, skip these two, skip that one, go to this as number one. Now let's make a mark. You know, it's great when I have stuff handy just a minute ago and then I can't find it. So what I want to do is say two and that one, and I just want to go down and it looks like it's just about where the D is. But I'm going to go ahead and make a little mark right there. That'll show me that's where, bingo, this needs to be pointing. So when I put this in the engine, I want, you know, there's always a little bit because these are helical gears, it'll move around a little bit. So when I get this settled down in there, I want that to be pointing at my mark that'll tell me it's at TDC and that's right where it would fire. So we'll go to the engine now. Uh, I'm also gonna put some of this uh, lube that came with the uh, distributor and I'll put it all over those gears and we'll get it dropped down in there and start to play with it. Okay, sounds good. I also had to put, uh, there was an O-ring that comes with it that goes there. That's got a little lube on it and uh, I've made my mark. Now, these also have, um, there's a lot of adjustment you can do in the advanced curves of these things. I mean, these are, these are meant to run a lot of different types of applications. Um, I'm just putting this thing just how it came in the box. So if there's some other um, big deal that needs to happen to it, um, because it doesn't run right or something like that, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I think these things are pretty much known for being able to fire up and go. So we'll see. Oh, what a mess. All right, so this is why I'm wearing gloves. I can't stand wearing gloves. I'll try and uh, get this in there without making a big mess. All right, now I can take this off because I've got that on. I still think it's too far off. So let's see if we can get it to be a little more this way. Okay, let's just test it. And if we have to pull it out and, uh, and readjust it, we certainly can. But um, that might be close enough to try. And I'll look at some photos and, and make sure that lines up. But anyway, it's sitting there and I've got a little uh, catch that will come there. This trigger's in though. Okay. All right, verified it a little bit, got it slightly advanced. This is a great tool. Uh, this is one of those things I only use every now and then, and it's really handy to have it. One of these little distributor hold down wrenches so you can get around everything without having to make a fuss about it. And if you need to adjust it later, it makes it super simple to do that. So that's tight. Um, so what we've done is I've, I've, it's on the mark, but it's slightly advanced from it. And, uh, I think, actually, I just moved it slightly naturally when I tightened it, didn't I, Brad? So we will loosen it back up a little bit and then hold it more tightly because I wanted this to be a little bit more that way. And now as I tighten, oh, make sure it doesn't move again. Always two steps forward, one step back. All right, we don't need any more of that. And I think it's gonna fire okay, we hope. That certainly looks where it ought to be.
All right, again, I would probably adjust these a little bit differently if this was gonna stay forever, but this is really just to run the car on the carburetor. So we got a fuel line and a filter. I think it's been mentioned before, I am extremely colorblind. So it says the red, red goes to positive on the coil and my coil is not marked positive or negative, but BAT, B-A-T, is positive. So why don't we just go ahead and start to put some wires where they belong. There's one more, now I have coil plus, so that means this from the harness needs to also connect to battery. And look how easy that is. And again, we get rid of our little thing there. These other ones here go to the temp sending unit, so I can leave those tucked away for now still. Uh, yeah, so this manifold, this doesn't fit, so I had to make a little fun standoff for it, which is not a big deal, so I can just... All I need to do is just make a little pestle that the coil will sit on top of, so I can screw it in. Of course, if I get the bolt in there, that would be helpful. And, you know, it just really needs to be out of the way, so... Ta-da! <laughs> Again, I know that's shady looking, but whatever. I don't care right now. Um, actually, I can make those go kind of around a little bit so they're not on top. And now the last one I need to do is this, which is a ground. And I think when I get the heater um, hose attached, there's a beautiful little bracket that connects it to the generator bracket here. And I think that's clear enough where I can use that as the ground. I believe that'll be the case. Uh, and then I'll kind of tuck this stuff out of the way and make sure that's not gonna get into anything. And again, this goes to a tack. If I had a different tack, I'm gonna leave that tied up out of the way also. All right, as much as I wanted to do just a little bit more, I'm sort of stuck waiting on parts. My water neck hasn't shown up yet. So where are we and what's left to do? We're really close to firing this motor. The Holley 650 is ready to go. I had to go get uh, wires. Uh, my friends at the metal shop here locally, they like actually make monster trucks. They have a speed shop and stuff. Uh, they actually had the right wires I needed. It was really just simple. It was just a different sort of booth that needed to go on it and my other wires didn't work. So anyway, I have those in my hand now so I can get those on and get that wired up. It's actually, um, not a lot of fun to do. There's a lot of contorting to get them through this engine bay uh, onto the plugs. So that's not gonna be much fun. And I got some gear oil so I can top up the transmission. If you guys remember, I lost about half the uh, level of the fluid on the floor when I dropped it out of there. I got brake fluid and um, we'll do the Evans and get it. Once that's in, I can actually fill the system and seal it. Then we will have electrics, we'll have fuel, will have coolant and I can drop it back on the ground and I think we can fire it and start messing around with the timing a little bit but we're really close thank you guys for hanging in there this has been really really fun to do and the next episode we should be uh, hearing life out of this thing all right thanks see you again